Welcome back to Global. I'm Philippa Thomas. The American hip-hop artist Yassine Bey, also known as Most Def, has appeared in a South African court charged with breaking local immigration laws, including overstaying his tourist visa and, most notably, presenting a so-called world passport as his travel documentation when trying to fly out of the country. Well, the world government of world citizens passport isn't recognized by the South African authorities and in fact only a handful of governments do recognize it but it's claimed that hundreds of thousands of people have registered themselves as world citizens uh, including activists and the longest serving first lady of the United States Eleanor Roosevelt and the somewhat well-known physicist Albert Einstein. Well the world government of world citizens was founded in 1954 by the late peace activist Gary Davis an American who renounced his citizenship after World World War II. So exactly what is the world government of world citizens sounds really grand. Let's speak to the president of the World Service Authority, David Gallup, who is in our Washington studio. David, that's a great title and I want to know, do you regard yourself as a world citizen? Yes, I do. We're all world citizens by birth and in fact because we're born on planet Earth and we're born of human parents. The, there's always two principles to citizenship, jus soli and jus sanguinis, the right of uh, the earth and the right of the blood. So that makes us all world citizens. And do you have a world passport? Can you show us? Yes, I do. I have a world passport right here. This is what it looks like. It's a 30-page document. It is machine printed and machine readable like any passport that you might see in the world. And it has been actually recognized by um, over 90 percent of all the, the nations of the world. Uh, more than 180 countries have recognized the passport by placing visa, entry, and exit stamps in it. And many countries continue to do so, including South Africa. They recognize it multiple times between uh, 1995 and, in just fact, until just this last August, we have a stamp that we have showing on our website, uh, f which was actually a residence stamp uh, and a work authorization from the government of South Africa. So they certainly do recognize it on a case-by-case -case basis. So what's gone wrong? Do you think the message just didn't filter down to the immigration officials? That's part of it. I think the, there's oftentimes turnover in immigration departments. Many people come in and so the historical knowledge from the past isn't passed on to the new people. Plus there's not enough education about our human rights. There's an important document which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And we try to educate as many people about that as we can every year. We give out hundreds of thousands of copies of this document in, in multiple languages. And I think that information about respect for our human rights also doesn't trickle down to the lower level officials when it should. David, I should also, yes. I, I, we haven't got very much time and I've just got a few questions I really want to ask you like who issues a world passport? Sure. World Service Authority is the administrative branch of the world citizen government that you mentioned at the top of the story. Uh, it has been issuing this document since 1954. From Washington? It is a global pub from Washington DC, correct. I mean that's really interesting because I have to say getting into the United States that's one of the most difficult borders to travel and, and can be the most difficult immigration officials to face. You can't walk Certainly. into the United States with a world passport can you? People have entered the United States over the years with the world passport. Certainly in the last few years it has become harder because of the global economic situation and the fear over terrorism. They have become much more restrictive as well as most of the wealthiest countries in the world have. So it is harder certainly. And but it is based upon our, it's based upon our human rights and so governments that have agreed to respect those human rights, all UN member states, should recognize it. I guess you have to bring up security here because one of the reasons that it's got much tougher to cross borders is concern about uh, terror, about terrorism and that's got, to be, that's got to make it less easy still to use your passport, hasn't it? Uh, well, that's true for every passport holder in the world unless you have perhaps a passport from one of the wealthiest countries. Now we have a compliance program so we make sure that every passport we issue we vetted the people before those uh, documents are issued. So from our side uh, we're fine uh, and not concerned but certainly governments are always concerned about who's coming in, why are they coming, are they coming and trying to stay and take a job. Our, of course our argument is that everyone has the right to freedom of travel. That's what it says in Article 13 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. You should be able to live and work where you want to on your own planet. And that presupposes, of course, a world in which everyone's basic human needs are met, which, of course, we aren't in that position now. But to get from the world where we are now to the world where, where we want to be, we have to start claiming our human rights and exercising them as world citizens. David Gallup, we have to leave it there. But thank you, and it's good to speak to, to an idealist as well. Thank you for your time.